Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So in case you didn't know, I'm an avid fly fisher who loves to fish the beaches of central California targeting species such as surf perch and striped bass. An essential piece of gear that I take out with me is called a stripping basket. This prevents your line from getting swept by the waves and tangled around you. So lately the design of the stripping basket that I'm using has been really frustrating me. Often I go fishing in about knee deep water and a wave will hit me, fill my basket with water and because the basket doesn't have enough drainage holes, it becomes heavy and uncomfortable to use. And a heavy basket weighing you down and making it difficult to keep your balance is the last thing you need when contending with waves and strong currents. So most stripping baskets on the market have the same issue as mine. They lack sufficient drainage holes. There are fabric mesh baskets that you can buy, but oftentimes I want to be able to rest my rod across my stripping basket, and these seem kind of flimsy and like they wouldn't be able to hold my rod up properly. What a lot of my fellow beach fly fishermen will do is they will get a Safeway basket and then convert it into their stripping basket. The basket shape is ergonomic and the plastic mesh design means that there are sufficient holes for water drainage. So since nothing on the market appeals to me and I am unwilling to shoplift, I decided that I was going to attempt to make my own 3D printed stripping basket. Since Target shopping baskets are almost identical to Safeway baskets in shape and size, I decided to go to Target to take measurements and photographs of their shopping baskets. And of course I ended up purchasing some stuff because it's Target and you can't go into Target without buying something. I then imported the photos into Fusion 360 and created the starting form of my design based on the size and shape of the Target basket. After modeling the base form of my basket, I generated a triangular surface pattern by converting the model into a mesh. I then made the mesh facets more uniform by using the remesh tool. And then reduced the number of triangular faces by using the mesh reduce tool. Because the mesh modeling features in Fusion 360 are very limited, I converted the mesh into a solid. So for some reason Fusion 360 was glitching out and wouldn't let me cut or edit the solid that I had just created from the mesh. I've been noticing bugs and performance issues in Fusion 360 lately. Let me know in the comments if you've been experiencing this too. So in order to have a model that I would be able to edit and manipulate, I ended up creating a 3D projected sketch of the triangular facets and then generated faces for each sketch triangle using the patch tool. As you can see, I only generated a quarter section of the triangular pattern. Later, I'll duplicate this section to create the full shape. I then cut the model body using the center planes of the origin and removed the bits of the model that were protruding past the center lines. I wasn't 100% happy with the way that the triangular pattern looked. So I redrew a different pattern of the facets with a 3D sketch and then used the patch tool again 
to create the new faces of the new sketched pattern. I repeated this step a few times until I was happy with how the triangular pattern looked. And as mentioned before, here is where I used the mirror tool to duplicate the other three corners of the basket body. I then closed up the bottom area of the basket by sketching out a triangular pattern and generating faces using the patch tool. I used the straight lateral and horizontal lines that wrap around the basket body to create the main rib structure of the basket. I did this by selecting the lines and then generating pipes using the pipe tool in the sculpting workspace. I then continued using the create pipe feature to fill out the rest of the basket ribs until I completed the first iteration of the basket. I then cut the model into 10 pieces in order to be able to print the basket because the full model is a lot bigger than my printer's build volume. After that, I cut holes along the sides of each of the pieces so that they could be strapped together using zip ties. I created an oval sketch and then used it to cut a groove through the sides of my basket. This groove will be used to rest my rod across my basket. After printing the first part, I immediately noticed a problem. It was very heavy. And obviously this was a design flaw because there were still 9 other pieces that had to be printed out that would have made the basket considerably heavy. So I decided to go back to Fusion 360 and reduce the mass of my design as much as I could. I reduced the thickness of the main structural ribs and used a different method to model the rest of the basket. I made an offset sketch on each triangular face and then used the cut body option to cut each triangle using the offset sketch as the cutting tool. I then removed the center pieces to create holes in each triangle. From there I created a 4mm thick solid body from the triangular faces using the thicken tool. So there is a way to measure the mass of a 3D model in Fusion 360. And to get an accurate measurement, you can specify which physical real life material that you are planning to make your 3D model out of.
I chose polypropylene because Fusion did not have PLA in its list of materials to choose from. And polypropylene was the most similar option to PLA density wise. Once the physical material was set, I selected my entire basket model and then selected properties from the right click drop down menu. So here you can see what my first iteration would have weighed if it was made from injection molded polypropylene. And here's how much the second iteration would have weighed if it was injection molded from polypropylene. I was pretty happy with how much I was able to slim everything down, so I started printing out the second iteration pieces. It took me over a week to print everything out because each print took between 9 to 25 hours. And to add insult to injury, while I was printing piece number 8, my printer crashed with the M112 error. Luckily I was able to fix it, and I'm planning to share my entire ordeal in a separate video. Finally, all the prints were done. Removing the support material from my prints took a long time and made for a huge mess. So PLA tends to absorb water which might cause issues if I'm extensively using my basket every other week. For instance, if the plastic keeps absorbing ocean water it might become really stinky later. So I decided to make my 3D prints water resistant by using a clear coat. At first I purchased Krylon Fusion Clear Spray Paint and tested it on a piece that I wasn't going to use. After the paint dried I tested it for water resistance. I weighed the piece beforehand and then placed it in a basin of water for 2 hours. After taking it out and weighing it again, it weighed 11 grams more, meaning it did absorb some water, but was still relatively water resistant. So even though I was pretty happy with the results of the Krylon spray paint, I really didn't like the fumes that it was giving off. It probably wouldn't have mattered after curing properly after a few days, but something just felt wrong about putting something into the ocean that gives off toxic fumes. So I went to the internet in search of a less toxic option and saw that a lot of people were using polyurethane spray, an allegedly non-toxic alternative, to waterproof their prints. So after purchasing the spray, I tested it out on one of the prints from my miscellaneous junk pile. And like with the previous part, I weighed it before, left it in water for 2 hours and then weighed it again to see how water resistant it was. It only gained a gram in weight meaning that it was pretty water resistant. I was pretty happy with the results of the polyurethane spray. So I sprayed it onto all the basket pieces and waited 2 days for it to completely cure and dry. I then assembled the basket by strapping all the pieces together with zip ties.
I didn't cut off the zip tie tag ends because I wanted to use them as line management spikes. Line management spikes are those weird rubber things sticking out of most stripping baskets. Once it was assembled, I tried it on and was happy with how it felt. Here you can see I'm using a bungee cord with hooks to strap it to me. And so it was finally time to test it out at the beach. I got up at 4am so that I could fish at first light and saw a skunk running around in the street where I parked my car. It was still so dark that my GoPro footage was completely black, so I decided to turn off my GoPro, spare the battery and get a few casts in unfilmed. So a few casts in I started to realize that the zip ties at the front of my basket was causing my line to bunch up, get tangled and then spill out of my basket. So I made a quick adjustment by cutting these tag ends off at the front of my basket. And after doing this my basket functioned a lot better. I had a lot of fun testing the basket out and even managed to catch a few fish in the process. I'm really happy with how the basket turned out. It's comfortable, it doesn't retain any water, and after a few adjustments, it held my line just as well, if not slightly better than my previous basket. I also love how ridiculously colorful and luminous it is. Anyway guys, that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please leave a comment, like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!